In this episode, Park Farm Campsite, we take a look at the Hermitage Ancient Site, All Saints Church, Dale Abbey, the Carpenter's Arms, and finally the Cat and Fiddle Windmill, all located in Dale Abbey, a village of Dale Abbey in Derbyshire. Let's get on with it. Morning time at Park Farm Campsite. It's a small uh, certified location site, so a maximum of five pitches. And this here is the field uh, for the site, if you like. As you can see, it's very uneven, so you will need ramps um, if you want to get a level as level as possible. It has fresh water, bins, uh, chemical toilet disposal point, etc. It doesn't have uh, toilets or showers, so you will need to have those in your van or motorhome. Um, it is a working farm, so be prepared for the sounds of tractors, etc. in the morning. Um, but it is very quiet at night, it's a very rural location, the views are spectacular. Um, there are stables on site and several uh, pastures with grazing horses, etc. It's also a small equestrian um, uh, site on the site where owners presumably come and jump their horses, etc. Uh, at the time of this video, which is March 2022, the cost per night was £15, including electric hookup. Definitely worth a visit if you're in the area. So at the moment, I typically tend to park the van up on a campsite um, or a location and then use my power-assisted bicycle to explore the local area. Um, you know, obviously a bicycle will only get you so far and whilst I'm quite capable of cycling for many miles, what I'm finding is the time consumption of going from one site to another um, especially when the sites you know maybe sprawled out around the base or the campsite that i'm parked up at um, you know so for example if there's an attraction in the east i want to see which may only be five or ten miles from the campsite but then the next attractions in the west which may also only be five or ten miles from the campsite but between the two it's a 20 mile cycle um, which is obviously time consuming and therefore I'm now cons I'm now in the process of having a tow bar fitted to my motorhome um, and once that's done I will then be getting a motorcycle trailer and purchasing a motorcycle. I have a motorcycle license so that's not an issue um, and I just think you know given the price of diesel at the moment in the country and the fact that all talk is that it's just going to continue to go up I think a motorcycle makes a lot of sense. I can then, you know, head out further afield from my base where I've parked the van and just have far more freedom to get out and create content and view things, which is ultimately what this road trip's about. Can't miss out. Oh, I'm done living life with the lights out. So our first stop is the Hermitage which is around two miles from Park Farm campsite. Um, quite an easy walk or cycle to get to. Uh, what I will say is that the day before I went to visit the site, it rained for the entire day. So this field does get rather muddy. Um, so make sure you've got suitable clothing and a tire on. And as you can see, um, you know, if you've got gun boots, that's probably the best thing to wear. Um, this field gets really boggy. So remember this was marshlands at one stage. So you can imagine the state of it when it's wet. Um, my bicycle was slip sliding all over the place as I tried to cycle up to the entrance to the, the hermitage. Be free.
So the hermitage itself is located about halfway up a rather steep hill. Um, these stairs again, when it's been raining, are really muddy, um, as you can hear. So please be careful when walking up. There is another route down to the hermitage from above, and again, those steps are horrendously steep and small. Um, and you'll see a clip of those stairs at the end of this particular uh, footage of the hermitage. This particular hermitage, hermitage is located in Hermit's Wood, which itself is an ancient remainder of Sherwood Forest and is about, as I've said, midway up a rather steep hill in what is now Dale Abbey which was previously called Deep Depperdale or Deepdale. It was renamed after a monastery was founded there in the 13th century. The hermitage is thought to date back to around 1130. It was created by a local baker from Derby, uh, believed to be named Cornelius, who during a dream was told by the Virgin Mary to go to Deepdale to live a life of solitary prayer which in those days was rather common and around the UK there are around 500 known hermits who lived this type of life back in those times. Um, it is listed, uh, so when Cornelius arrived in what is now Dale Abbey, um, he found nothing more than marshland in the valley with steep sandstone hills um, to the southern, southern side. It's within these hills that he carved out and created his dwelling, which you see here. It is, left, it is listed as a scheduled ancient monument in, in England. Um, there are a few others scattered around the country and the UK. Um, internally, the hermitage measures around 6 meters long by 2.7 meters wide. So, in fact, it's not much bigger than my... Um, my mother home. Can you imagine living in this space on your own for some 20 years, which is how long Cornelius apparently lived in this particular hermitage? Um, on the one wall, you will notice a cross um, engraved into the wall. It is on this side that is believed to be where he slept. Um, and on the opposite wall, again, there is a kind of a dugout in, in the wall there, which they believe to be the altar and the side where he did most of his praying. Um, so there's two doorways and two windows, which looking at them, the holes in the frame of the doorways, for example, would suggest that he had some kind of protection or, or door um, there in place at the time that he lived there. On the external um, to the front of the cave as you walk in just above the doorways and windows there are um, four joist holes which people believe therefore that he might have had some kind of external building so perhaps kind of a a lean-to or something like that outside the cave giving him a bit of shelter. Further remains of the structure are believed to survive beneath the ground surface of the cave, so just outside the cave itself, um, uh, but obviously these cannot be seen. This, uh, this is the steps down to the cave, so coming from above the, the, the hill, above the hermitage, um, and as you can see, they are rather steep, rather small, and when they are wet, rather dangerous. So please, again, be very careful going navigating down these steps if you are going to go and see the hermitage. It's well worth a visit if you're into history, which I am, um, and this is a very well-preserved hermitage indeed. So the next stop is All Saints Church. And to get there, you walk or cycle through Hermit's Wood, which, as I said, is an ancient remainder of Sherwood Forest itself. Mm -hmm. 
So at this point my leg said no, this hill was just not going to happen for me, so off I get and push. grade one listed and until the dissolution of the monasteries was Dale Abbey's infirm Mary Chapel. Uh, it is attached to a Tudor house. This house was once the infirmary of Dale Abbey together with the attached chapel. Uh, following the dissolution the infirmary eventually became the Blue Bell Inn, then a farmhouse and currently it is a privately owned house. was constituted as an abbey in 1204. By 1536 its income was well below the threshold set for the dissolution of lesser monasteries and although there were accusations of grave immorality that the abbey was allowed to pay a fine to continue its existence until 1538. Um, <clears throat> as you can see there's not much left of the abbey. Um, this is the east grand window I believe or arch anyway um, a lot of the uh, furniture and um, windows stained glass etc were sold off or distributed to other abbeys around the UK um, there are a few other bits of the abbey that remain uh, most of which have been incorporated into local houses and within the village of Dale Abbey so this is really all you can see um, as a member of the public. this point the thirst was getting strong and I also needed something to eat so I located the nearest pub and went to have a visit. As with many English pubs uh, the carpenter's arms has a lot of character both externally and internally. Very pleased to see that they had a vegan burger I think uh, moving mountains patty that they use and if you haven't tried those one of the best burgers I've tasted so far um, and a very reasonable price actually so well worth a visit as I say if you do visit Dale Abbey it's not I don't think there's any other pub around um, also they do allow motorhomes and camper vans to stay overnight at a cost of five pounds um, or 10 pounds so an extra five pounds if you want electric hookup 
so really is worth the visit um, and just a consideration or somewhere to park if you do visit Dale Abbey. And then the final destination is the Cat and Fiddle Windmill, um, which I'm sure you are pleased that this video is almost as an end. I'm not sure how exciting it is to watch me cycling all over the shop. Um, so perhaps in future videos I will have less of this. Um, the reason I've included the cycling is really just to give you an idea of the distances so that you can decide whether you can cycle or walk these distances yourself really. The Cat and Fiddle Windmill dates back to approximately 1788 and is the only surviving post mill in Derbyshire. Derbyshire. So there you have it folks. I know it's been a rather long video again, but I hope that it's provided some value, some education perhaps. Um, and perhaps you can let me know, would you like to see separate videos for each site or um, attraction that I visit or would you prefer to see as I've done here a bit of a compilation of everything to do in a specific area. So if you can please let me know your thoughts on that, should I keep them short, should I make them longer, you know it really is also about you and what your viewing preferences are. well be kind and be safe and please do hit the subscribe button guys